Hey out there, Pixies and Peeps. Thanks for tuning into the Purple Pixie. And welcome, or welcome back to my craft room, which is what I call the Fairy Garden. If you're new to my channel, I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button down there if you want to become part of the Pixie Party. We have lots of cheap crafts and lots of cheap laughs. Today's video is once again part of the Minis Challenge that's hosted by Crafted by Cory. This challenge is held on the third Friday of each month and is an open invite. I'll leave the link for Cory's channel down below in my description box and I highly suggest you go check her out. She makes some amazing things on her channel and you're gonna have to tune in to find out what they are. The theme for this month's mini challenge was hometown slash patriotic. And since I just did two patriotic videos last month, I decided to go with hometown and a Mardi Gras theme because I live in South Louisiana and we sure love our Mardi Gras. However, thanks to COVID, we didn't have one this year. But that's not going to stop me from decorating. So just sit back, enjoy the jazz, and let's see what I came up with for this month's minis challenge. First DIY is some painted crab shells. Now down here, we love our boiled seafood. And I had a neighbor that donated some crab shells to me one weekend after they had boiled them and ate them, of course. But I was okay with that because truly, I hate peeling crabs. But then I found out that what I hate even more is cleaning boiled crabs. Once you remove all the gook and the muck and everything like that, you have to boil them down a little bit more and then scrub the hell out of them to get everything out. They may not be looking too pretty right now, but just wait till you see how I glam them up a bit. Now if you didn't know, the Mardi Gras colors are purple, green, and gold. And just about every household down here has a shirt like this in their closet. It's pretty much a staple, just like flour or sugar, or down here, rice and bread. So to make my Mardi Gras crab shells, I started out by painting them with some acrylic, purple, yellow, and green paint. Now, I wouldn't suggest using acrylic paints because they really don't stick to these crab shells. And what I ultimately ended up having to do after painting most of them is go in with a good coat of Mod Podge on top of the paint and then do a second and even third coat. And after all that boiling and cleaning and I now truly understand the term crabby. Because even though these little boogers are very dead, they're also very pointy and very sharp and very fragile. And those three things together or enough to put me in a very crabby mood. Now you'll notice I painted one brown and I'm painting over another one in black. That's because the only thing we like more than Mardi Gras down here is our Saints football team. Yep, that's right. We love our Saints. And once you're a Houdat, you're a Houdat for life. And we go straight from football season into the parties and throws of Mardi Gras. And since sometimes the Super Bowl weekends kind of intertwine with the weekends of Mardi Gras parades, it sure makes one heck of a party gras. Especially that one year that we actually made it to the Super Bowl and won. Trust me, any of us that were alive and down here for that will not be forgetting it anytime soon. So anyway, once I finished painting the shells, I gave them a good coat of Mod Podge. And for this one, since I can't draw a decent fleur-de-lis, I printed one out onto copy paper, cut it out with my small detail scissors, and I'm going to decoupage it onto the shell just so it will give me an outline 
to go over it with my gold paint marker. So what do you like to do during a Super Bowl season or just before Lent? Have you ever been to Mardi Gras? Let me know in the comments down below what you liked, what you didn't like, or what you would like to do. Now like I said, once I get this mod podged on and it's dry, I do go over it with my gold paint marker. But we'll see that in the end. Let's get into DIY number two, the Mardi Gras beaded garland. Now I dug through my stash and I found these what we call specialty beads or prize beads. These are the kinds of necklaces that everybody wants to catch from the floats. But once you catch them and Mardi Gras season is over, they just sit in bags in a closet or a storage room and pretty much you don't do anything with them. So I'm going to take these apart and we're going to use the pretty beads for a beaded garland and the specialty part of the beads like the saxophone and the fleur-de-lis for another DIY in this video. Now, having learned my lesson in the past by doing this, I'm putting them each in a Ziploc bag and then I will cut the string and take the beads off of the string in the bag. Because if you don't do it in a bag, then this DIY would quickly turn into somewhat of a baby's diaper. In other words, you'll have that everywhere. And I've got better things to do with my time than catch rolling beads off the table or pick them up off the floor or jack them out of my vacuum cleaner at a later date. So once I have my beads separated, I'm going to use another staple in every Louisiana household. Some fishing line to make our beaded garland. I used to make jewelry a couple years ago, so I invested in one of these little bead boards and trust me, they come in quite handy for projects like this. You can put your fishing line or your cording in the corner up at the top. There's little notches up at the corner that you can put your cording into and that way it keeps your beads from sliding off your string. So I just strung some beads together and put a pendant on the end to make a garland. And now for project number three is the mini Mardi Gras wreath. Now this is my tree as I decorated it for Mardi Gras. It had some salt dough ornaments that I made, porcelain dolls and masks, and of course, lots of beads. But since this challenge is about minis, I realized I didn't have a mini wreath. So I'm going to take a shower curtain ring, some florals from the Dollar Tree, and some floral garland, and make a miniature wreath. And I actually got this idea from Corey as well. I saw her make a miniature wreath and a mini wreath hanger, and I have been saying since that I was going to dupe that. Well, here's my chance, and I hope I do it justice. I'm going to start out by wrapping the shower curtain ring with this leaf garland that I got off of Amazon. I was watching Olivia on Olivia's Romantic Home the other day, and she said something about starting out with greenery and just when you think you have enough, add a little bit more. So I took this leafy garland and I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and then I wrapped some more. But I'm not going to make you watch me wrap the whole thing. Once I got to the end, I just took a little hot glue to hold it in place. And then I'm going to snip apart some florals and make them look like, well, miniature florals. Since I've already got the leaves on there to represent the green in Mardi Gras, I'm going to cut up these yellow florals and then I'll cut up some lilacs and place them on there as well. I start with the little yellow flowers, which are called amaranthus. 
and I just hot glue little pieces all around the wreath. And now I'm going to layer the lilacs on top of the amaranthus. By the way, if you're new here, I want to say hello, my name is Crystal, and welcome to my channel. I'm really happy that you stopped in for a peek, and I hope you like what you see. As I said, we have plenty of cheap crafts and cheap laughs. So if that's something you're looking for on YouTube, well, you found it. So please be sure to hit that subscribe button and become a part of the Pixie Party. And if you're a returning subscriber, as always, I want to say welcome back. I really appreciate all of your support because without you, I wouldn't be here. Now here you see me struggling with one of those little fleur de -lis. I'm trying to string it up in the middle of the wreath. Few things don't go as planned, but eventually I figure it out and just grab the hot glue gun and put it all in place. If you'd like to see me struggle with it a little more, watch the bloopers at the end of this video. You're sure to get a laugh out of that. But for now, let's move on into project number four, the mini wreath hanger. Now this one was quite simple. I just took a block of MDF board, a paint stir stick that I had cut down to size, and a wooden dowel that I had on hand that I painted and ended up not even using. I gave all those things a good coat of my truffle chalk paint, and then I glued the stir stick onto the back of the MDF board. And since I decided not to use the wooden dowel, I'm going to glue this mini tumbling tower block to the back of my stir stick so that way I'll have something to screw the hook into. And then of course giving the stir stick a combination of wood glue and hot glue, I'm going to just glue it to the back of the MDF board. And who needs that wooden dowel anyway? Now I'm just going to screw the hook into my paint stir stick and the mini tumbling tower block. I don't quite get it all the way before my fingers start messing up on me, so I took this pair of scissors and tried to screw it in like that. Well, that wasn't working either. So I just screwed it in as far as I could and then hung my wreath. And now project number five is my favorite, the mini Mardi Gras gnome. Now if you've been following me for a while, you know I like to make miniature gnomes. And I also like trash to treasure. So I'm just going to use this protein shake bottle as my gnome form. And for his clothing or body or whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to wrap some yarn all the way around it. That way, I don't even have to paint the bottle. All I did was lay down a bead of glue and then just started wrapping it with yarn. By the way, that new glue gun they sent me, <laughs> I painted mine purple. And I put some transfers on it too. Isn't she pretty? But she's also persnickety. So for now, Petunia is coming back into the picture to help us make this hat for our gnome, which is also just a K-cup pod wrapped in yarn. Now 
Now, I'll need a top for my hat, so I just took some craft foam, and we're going to glue that on top. But first, we need to make our braids in order to make the hat look kind of like a jester's hat. So I'm going to take three strands of yarn, I'm going to fold them in half, and just tie them with another strand of yarn. And then I will tape that off onto my table, divide the strands into three pieces, and just braid them. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to tie them in a knot, and then we will take our braids, glue them to our hat, and put the top of the hat on top of them. If I'm not making sense, I'm sure you can understand by watching what I do. Now, to make our little gnome a beard, I'm going to take some of this Mardi Gras ribbon that I've had for years. It was part of my mom's stash, and I don't know how long it's been hanging out in mine. But I'm going to wrap it around another K-Cup pod, just for reference, to see how long I need it. Now, I'm going to tape it down to my mat. And we're going to use the same yarn that we used to wrap around the gnome's body to make his little beard. I'm going to measure it out and how long I need it. And then I'll use that for reference to cut some more strips of the yarn. But I'm going to double them instead of cut them into one small strip, if that makes any sense. Because I'm going to be gluing these to that Mardi Gras ribbon. I'm going to cut several strips of each color and then I'm going to mix them all up and glue them to that ribbon and then we're going to separate the strands of the yarn to make it look more fuzzy. And now that I have my pieces cut, I'm going to take one piece of each color, I'm going to fold that strand in half and glue it to the ribbon. And once I have them all glued down, I'm just going to go around the top of it with another bead of hot glue to make sure that they're all pressed in place. And now I'm going to take my mini screwdriver, and sometimes just my fingers, and separate the strands of yarn. This is worsted weight yarn, so there's usually about four strands in each piece. When you separate them, they kind of come out a little curly, and it'll look like a little brushy beard when we're all done. This part may take a little while, but if you binge watch or want to watch one of my videos while doing it, that'd be perfectly fine by me. But with a little pixie powder and some fairy magic and, well, editing. <laughs> I'm all done with his beard and now we're just going to glue it down underneath his hat. Now we just glue his little hat on and he'll be ready for his nose. Oh, and his arms too. I made that out of some craft foam as well. I just drew out a shape, folded it in half, and cut out both pieces.
And now I'm gonna glue his little arms on with the thumbs pointing up on each side and angle them towards the front because this gnome's going to be holding a beer. I got this beer mug off of one of those specialty beads and I'm going to fill it with some yellow tissue paper once I get his hands glued to it that is. Oh, and here I am just gluing some yellow cording around the purple craft foam to kind of hide the seam where I put the braids underneath. And now it's time to put on his nose, which is just a little wooden bead that I got in a big pack from Amazon. And once I get his beard all tucked into place underneath his arms and his beer mug and all that good jazz, I'm just going to take some yellow crepe paper, hot glue a little in the bottom, and puff it up to make it look like he's got beer in his mug. And now for our last project, a Mardi Gras pedestal for our gnome to stand on. I'm going to take this miniature cookie tin from the Dollar Tree that I painted white in for a previous project, some Mardi Gras ribbon, and an empty aluminum tin of deviled ham, and I'm going to make a pedestal of sorts for the gnome to stand on. I just take this really pretty Mardi Gras ribbon and I wrap it around both cans. I'm going to fold the ends before I glue it down to the other side just to give it a more finished edge. In hindsight I didn't really need to wrap the smaller can because you can't even see it once the project's done but oh well I wasn't sure where I was going with this and I wanted to make sure that it looked finished just in case you could see it. Now here's where those specialty beads came in. I took them apart as you saw earlier and I'm just going to outline and color some them in with my paint markers. Just kind of give them a little jazzy makeover. My friend Favi from Arrows DIY told me that I had to incorporate some kind of saxophone or drum because as a Yankee from New York City that's what she thought of when she thought Mardi Gras. So I was overjoyed when I came across these saxophones and I gave them a good color coat with my copper metallic paint pen. Now I'm taking these skinny bamboo skewer sticks from the Dollar Tree or Walmart, I can't remember where I got them, and I'm cutting them down, sticking them inside my hot glue nozzle and then into the specialty bead. That way I don't have a big glob of goo oozing out. And then I measured the skewers as they would fit inside the aluminum tin can and cut them up with my tin snips. And now I'm going to glue each stick inside the tin can. Once I have them all glued in going around the entire can, I do go back and reinforce them with some more hot glue.
And then I hot glue our little Mardi Gras gnome right onto the can in the middle for his little pedestal. I take some of this Easter grass or basket filler in the colors purple, yellow, and green. And I mix it all up and I stuff it in there just to give it a filler so you can't see the blank spaces in the tin can. And now that he's all done, are you ready for the final reveal? I sure hope so because here it is. So, what did you think? Were they magic or mishap? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And hey, while you're down there, check out the description box for the links to the playlist. Why don't you go ahead and subscribe and ring my bell so you'll know every time I upload a new video. You can also find me on other social media platforms by finding the links in my description box below. Another link you'll find on there is one to buy me a coffee. If you'd like to support my channel and maybe help me buy some craft supplies so I can keep bringing these DIYs to you, go ahead and click that link and buy me a coffee if you don't mind. And I'd like to give another huge thanks to Corey for hosting this minis challenge every month. I love taking part of it. And with that, I'll leave you with this. Laissez les bons temps rouler, which simply means let the good times roll. Thank you so much for watching. Please have a blessed day and remember that 
all of me loves all of you. Why do you always go for the glasses? Hmm? Sydney? What? Oh, why do you go for the glasses? Would you stop? What's the matter? Hmm? What? Nope. No button ahead. <laughs> 